us to looking at characters of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so we're going to work our way through the Bible. I think that uh, the reason we're doing that is because I want us to, there are people we know a lot about, but there are people that we don't know, and they have fascinating stories. And what I like about the Old Testament is that the Old Testament tells us stories about real human beings who re- do really human things and uh, about the God that, that pursues them, the God that loves them. So, uh, plan on that adventure. Um, the passage we read this morning, um, I think, is a, is a very appropriate one for those of you who are graduating, and, and for all of us, as far as that's concerned, as we look at that passage and we begin to think about about what the essence of that passage is, is it's very simple. God loves his created ones. In fact, we're told in the passage that God, uh, from the very beginning, chose to create man. And when he created man, he took him and he put him in the garden. And, And the garden that he put him in was a garden that was beautiful, that had everything was perfect. Ever been to a place that's perfect? I was out to see my garden yesterday. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't figure out if the garlic that I planted are the weeds that are sitting there or if it's the garlic. Um, but there's a lot of weeds in my garden. Well, can you imagine not ever having to have to do any weeding in your garden? I mean, what a great thing that, and no bugs. And, and so when God put Adam into the garden, he said, hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hang out with the animals. I want you to eat any of the fruit that you could possibly want to eat. And I want you just to live life and take care of what I've created. And so what we see about God is we see a God that, that, that chooses, that chose to take us and to make us the caretakers of our world. Now, we can talk about how that's going later on. But, but the only thing that God asked of them is, which, okay, the, the world is yours. I've made it for you. I want you to live in harmony and, and to play with the lions and, and, and to, to, to snuggle up to the elephants. I just want you to hang out. I want you to take care of everything I've made. I only have one request. That in the middle of the garden, there is... Two trees, one the tree of life. Eat all you want from that one, that's a great one. But don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's pretty easy. Now, I'm just curious, you guys who are graduating, did mom and dad only have one rule that you had to follow in the home? Just one? A few. You know, isn't it interesting that, that, that God started off the saying to, to his created ones, I got one rule and one rule only. Boy, I tell you what, wouldn't it be great to be in those days? You know, we could just have to follow one rule. Don't eat from that tree right there. But, well, Adam and Eve were doing great. And I, I don't know what it was like, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't even want to... Visualize, but they're hanging out and they're in their perfect, perfect environment. There was no, there was no rain. There was no snow. There was always sunshine. There was, it was beautiful. And and they would walk through the woods and not have to worry about swatting mosquitoes. Uh, they were just out there enjoying what God created and enjoying life. Sometimes. Sometimes life is maybe too easy. Sometimes maybe we we experience, and, and I don't know how many of you experience, but everything's going along smooth. Adam and Eve, things are going along smooth. And then one day, um, Adam and Eve were walking through the garden, and they came close to the tree at the center, and and uh, a snake showed up. By the way, I don't know what a snake looked like back then. I know that, that what they look like now. They're um, they're not. I mean, they're beautiful. If you think snakes are beautiful, I guess. But 
They're not. But my understanding from the scripture is that the snake was the most beautiful creature in in all of creation, and that the snake probably walked upright. I don't know if you've ever thought about a snake walking upright, but probably the snake, because the, because the story is told about how he was the most beautiful and how the snake, well, he later on got a curse to to be on his belly the rest of his life. By the way, if if you uh, I'm digressing for a moment, but if you haven't watched uh, the Passion, which is a movie that is incredibly graphic at the end, you have to watch the opening scene of that movie as Jesus is in the garden and as a snake call, crawls up to him and uh, from coming from Satan. It was a fascinating picture, visual. But that's just the point. So what, what was what the dilemma was, was Eve was standing by this uh, snake and, and uh, by the tree and the snake says, hey, check it out. What do you think of this tree? In fact, he, he was a little more subtle than He said, you know, is there anything that you can't eat from? Is there anything that God has said you can't have? Well, Eve says, well, no, we can have, have anything and everything we want. But God has said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you'll die. Well, isn't it just like Satan to show up and say, you know, that's a fine looking fruit. And you know, God ain't going to do that to you. He's, he's, he's created you and he's given you all these things that you have. He's not going to do that. He's not going to hurt you. And man was given the first opportunity to make a choice. And we read on that Eve made a choice. And Adam, being uh, a male, I, I often tell couples when I'm counseling them for marriage that the, the only word, two words that a male needs to know in relationship to the marriage is, yes, dear. And if you get that down, you're going to be fine. And, but here's an example of, yes, dear, was not such a wise idea, because Eve said, hey, good fruit. And we're told that Adam said, yes, dear, and had a piece bite of the fruit. So, what does that have to do with graduates? What does that have to do with us? The, the reality is, is that God has given to us the freedom to choose. Why did God give us the freedom to choose? He would have been much better off if he didn't give us a choice. We would be all sitting around here this morning naked and having a great time and there'd be animals and, and creatures that we just it would be wonderful if we would have just if we would have just not given the freedom to choose. And yet God gave them the freedom to choose. It gave us the freedom to choose. And because of that, we broke relationship with God. Now here's where I want to apply it. You students who are going on to college or going on to vocations or going on to maybe some of maybe in hockey or maybe some of you are going to take a year off. But you who are going on to school, you're going to be facing a lot of choices. Most of you kind of have an idea as to where you're going to go. I want you to know that in the first two years of college, I was able to choose four different majors. And finally, I settled on the one I did because it was the easiest. But you're going to find that you have the freedom to choose. And, and the choices you make, I talked to someone uh, this past week uh, that, that, that went to Scholastica and wanted to become a, a nurse. And, Three years of beginning to the nursing training, she decided the last minute, you know, I'm out of money, I can't do it anymore, so she dropped out. Now she works as an animal tech, at a, at a, and, which is a fine job. But you're going to be ch 
challenged with the choices that you make. You're going to have to make decisions about where you're going. And, and that, is, that to me is a privilege that we have in particular as Americans. We have the privilege of making choices. But in the midst of making choices, we can choose good or we can choose bad. We can choose to do what is best or we can choose to do something that isn't as good. We can choose the, choose the best, or we can choose maybe a little less than best, or maybe, and some of us are going to choose, you know, one of the young people that graduated from the, or that, uh, that uh, was a part of this church, Confirmation Church, went on to make some choices that we know about that to sell drugs, and is now in jail. Now, I would suspect that if he would be here this morning, that he would have said, at Confirmation, he said, you know, that, I'm not going that direction. So sometimes we need to realize that the choices we make are going to impact the future we have. The choices we make, in fact, I'll give another illustration of my own life. I was, I was in my second year of, of uh, college. I finished my second year of college and I was going on to my third year. But I was doing Vietnam and I was doing this draft thing where they could say, well, because I was going to college, I had a deferment. But... I was short one credit hour of being a full-time student. And my draft board says, um, you got to make that credit up. And I said, yeah, 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 sure. And um, I went to Canada instead, not to escape the draft, just so you know that. But I went to Canada to uh, do a missions trip. And when I was in Canada, I got a, a letter from my draft board that said, Hey, they're up to 50, but don't worry, they're not going any higher than 50. I got home, and the draft board got me and the draft lady were good buddies. And she says, Hey, they're up to 75, but don't worry, that's the last that they're going to do drafting. You're safe. The night before I go to college, my draft board lady calls me and tells me, oh, by the way, if I would have played football, I would have been out of it. If I would have played football, I quit football. Was that, don't quit football. <laughs> I would have not been drafted. But I got a call saying, you're going to be drafted, you're going to be going into the, into the military. Two years of paid vacation. Not true. Because of a choice that I made that I didn't think was that significant, I spent two years going a different direction. So the choices we make are very important. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you, the choice of not going to finish that one class and, and getting drafted, that was not a bad thing. It was a journey that made four years turn into eight years. But my experience in the military taught me some things and caused me to think, process some things. And really, in a sense, was the time in which I began to confirm the fact that I wanted to go into ministry. So sometimes when we make a choice that looks bad, it isn't necessarily bad. It's what we do with the choice that becomes the issue. But we have to make choices. We have the privilege and the honor of making choices. And so as graduates, I, I say to you, think about the choices you're going to make. Think about where you're going. Think about why you're going there. And it doesn't mean that you have to have your major all picked out in your freshman year. It doesn't mean you have to have your major picked out in your fourth year. It doesn't even mean you can graduate from college and not know what you're going to do in graduate school here. But when we make choices, we live with those choices. And that's one of the greatest things about God, is that God lets us make wrong choices. When Eve ate the fruit of the tree that she wasn't supposed to eat from, God didn't say, <clears throat> He came to them, and He looked for them, and He sought them out. Because even in the midst of making a bad choice, God still loved His created ones. Now, we may make choices that have consequences. Any choice we make has a consequence. There can either be a good consequence or a bad consequence. 
but there's going to be whatever choice we make. But the part that is so exciting to me is that no matter what choices we make, God seeks and desires to pursue us. He longs to be in relationship to us. And even though Adam and Eve made a bad choice and there is consequences to it, God still continued to pursue and to love them. I guess if I were to sum up the story of Adam and Eve, I guess we see the first picture of God who created man and woman to be in perfect harmony with him and to be in perfect harmony with all that God had created. We see a God who had the best for us, who wanted the best for us, but for us to be able to celebrate the best, we need to have the freedom to choose not to take the best. And then we need to understand that even though we may not take the best, even though we may choose poorly, God still pursues and loves us. Now I'm going to close with an illustration. The church in which I was a pastor uh, in Cannon Falls uh, got a, a, new, a new preacher that was uh, so fresh out of, uh, well, he hadn't even gone to school yet, um, but he wanted to go into ministry. His journey into ministry started out when he went to college and decided to become a chiropractor. He practiced as a chiropractor for several years, built his own business, sold his business, decided to go and become an entrepreneur and do, do, uh, do working for uh, uh, non-profit organizations. He moved from that into another job and now finally here in his 55 years old decided, I think God wants me to serve as a pastor. The journey isn't the issue. The choices we make, they're going to be good and they're going to be bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to end up negative. But we need to be aware that the choices we make will impact the rest of our lives. And by the way, graduates, join the crowd. The choices that we make make a difference in what happens in our lives. And it isn't about whether we make the right choice or the wrong choice. It's about recognizing the God who gives us the freedom to choose so that we might learn to celebrate the love of that God at work in us. God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is only the best for us. And even if we choose to go a different direction, he still has only the best for us. So you who are graduating, and the rest of you who are sitting in the pew, some of you have had fulfilled dreams, that have you've, you've met every standard and expectation you have. Most of us have really not gotten where we thought we were going to be. But God is still faithful. Adam and Eve discovered a God who, even though they made bad choices, pursued them and loved them. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the truth of your uh, story about Adam and Eve. You gave them the freedom to choose, just like you give us the freedom to choose. And we are going to make good choices and we're going to make bad choices. But even in the midst of our bad choices, you, God, are faithfully following and pursuing us. May we, in the midst of the choices we make, continue to look back at the God who gives us the freedom to choose and who loves us no matter what or where we go. 2,000 years ago, Father, you sent your Son that you knew when, even before the foundation of the creation of the world, that you knew that you'd be sending your Son to die on the cross because you knew we would make bad choices. 
But even in the midst of our making bad choices, you still love us enough to send your Son to die for us. May we live, may we live in the privilege of knowing a God who is present always with us and who never leaves us or forsakes us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I believe took the bread and the cup. When Christ lived on the earth, he knew he was going to end in death. And that he chose on the night before his